Now back to the Red and Gold Roundtable on 957 The Game. Welcome back to the Red and Gold Roundtable here on 957 The Game. Damon Bruce, Bonte Hill, Kyle Madsen, and we are brought to you by our friends at BMW Fairfield, now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. Obviously, we're getting closer and closer to booking our visit to week one in Chicago, and Bonte, Mr. Vacation himself. <laughs> I mean, look at what you've got coming up. Are you going to two games at, at Wrigley? Two game or just one game at Wrigley. We get in Friday night at Wrigley. Then we go to the Cubs Giants game on Saturday. Although Notre Dame's playing down in South Bend, and I did think about a boarding mission and going down to South Bend to go see Notre Dame. Never been down there. Let me ask you: Have you ever been to Wrigley before? Yes, I have not. Oh, oh, okay. So every time I went to Chicago when Anna lived there. The Cubs were out of town, so we went to a White White Sox game to sterile ass guaranteed rate field, and it was a joke. Look. Notre Dame, Notre Dame games are special. They're a big, special, cool thing to see with your own two eyes. But you might as well just keep it the ultimate San Francisco no weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Wrigley yeah. Field for the first time. And then 49ers, Bears at Soldier <laughs> Field. Not too bad. Not a good way bad. to open the year. And a soft landing spot. And I guess that yeah. that's where we begin this segment. Because one of the things, you know, when we were talking about what we wanted to accomplish over the two hours of this roundtable was maybe break down the entire year by quarters. I think that that's, that, that's a fool's errand because right. who knows what your team looks like a month into the year. There's a, I don't know what the Niners are going to look like going into week five. I don't know what their week five opponent's going to look like going into week five. But let's just look at the first four games of the season as kind of a landing spot as you can get going against the Chicago Bears. Kyle Shanahan should strip flay and hang upside down Matt Eberflus as a coach in his first ever game as an NFL head coach. Shanahan should destroy his game plan. Then you come on back for Seattle, which, look, I got enough respect for whenever those uniforms are on the field against the 49ers. Don't just assume it's going to be an easy day. Division games are hard. They are. Very difficult. They are. No matter how much they have changed, no matter how set up to not look good they are, beating Seattle easily I'll assume that that's happened after it's happened. Mm -hmm. But it really does look like 2-0 for the Niners, just on paper, and then things get very interesting quickly. Mm -hmm. In the next two games alone, you have one of your ultimate, this guy is a pain in our rear end in a new situation, Russell Wilson, obviously Monday night football in Denver, that's going to be a madhouse for the 49ers to walk in. And then it's the defending Super Bowl champions. And even though Shanahan really does have McVay's regular season number, mm. man, there's that. that's a big football game. The first, if you do come out of the first four weeks of this year, three and one, everything is absolutely golden and spectacular and you could not ask for a better start obviously other than 4-0 and but we're not going to get that cocky <laughs> before the year even starts so that's what i think i think three and one is actually on the table despite that denver game being in prime time being trey lance's first real is that the one is that the one i uh, mm, me, uh, yeah, we'll call it okay. the one for now. We'll call it, it's Trey Lance's first real road game. Like, not disparaging Chicago, but they have yeah, that whole lead up. Yeah, you They did. have 17 days <laughs> leading up right. to that uh, before going there. So that's going to be that, that first right. real road game in prime time. I think those first four games, though, might be like, like, we keep focusing on the like, oh, man, what if Trey stinks? But what if he doesn't? Like, what if this offense with Trey Lance, because Bonte, you mentioned it earlier, yeah. 20 to 25 pass attempts. I think their run game, we're mm -hmm. going to see things that have defenses. We talked to Chris Canty on Willard and Dibbs, and he was on the New York Giants the year in, in Shanahan's division, the year RG3 was, oh, yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. in Washington. Washington. Yeah, yeah. And he said, we had a good defensive line, and we had no idea what they were doing. And I think that's a little bit what this Niners offense is going to look like. And I think that's going to cover up some of the flaws on the offensive line. I think it's going to cover up some of the flaws of Trey Lance. And by week four, we might be looking at this going, they are revolutionizing football. Right. Holy crap. This is why they drafted this guy. Nobody can stop this offense. Yeah, no, I mean, the vision of Trey Lance on the perimeter with the linebacker saying, what do I do? Do I step up and stop him from running? 
or do I scale back to where Trey Lance is going to get 10 yards in a first down? Pick it up those first downs. Or we saw Russell Wilson do mm-hmm. all those years in Seattle where he just puts the ball out, up oh, 10 yards, boom, drive extends, we keep it rolling. These first four games are monster because, look, week one in the NFL, the unthinkable happens. Yep. That might be the Chicago Bears Super Bowl outside of playing the Green Bay Packers this year. Week one, the Niners are coming to town. Niners beat them up last year at Soldier Field. Justin Fields is coming out. New coach. They want to get a win. They're going to bring out Buckus and Singletary, Richard Dent. They're going to Mike Dicka may be on the video board or what? The Darnell Mooney yeah. game. You guys yeah. remember the Darnell right. Mooney Darnell game? Mooney. Oh my God! So, so it's going to be some hairy moments in that game. But the Niners should win. They I should agree. win that game. I agree. Seattle week two. I don't believe in Geno Smith. You think Geno Smith's going to walk into Levi Stadium and throw a couple touchdown passes no. and win G- that football game? Geno Smith's, Smith's only job this year is to get Seattle a top three pick. Exactly. Yep. And not only, yeah, you're right, Colt McCoy did, but Seattle also has two rookie tackles. They mm-hmm. may be good one day, but you're coming in with two rookie tackles with number 97 on the other side of yep. the field, Nick Bosa. Yeah, I'm chalking that up as a win. Denver in Denver, I don't think I've ever seen an seen the Niners win one time in Denver when it was a meaningless game and Frank Gore went crazy. Look, that's a loss. It's a loss on paper. It's a loss on paper. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we were hyped. Like, oh, you know what? The Niners are 7-9. Yeah. They may go to 10-6 the next season. And yeah, it didn't happen. It didn't. Um, that may be a loss because Russell Wilson. I, I'm eager on Denver, though. I want to see I want to see what the receivers look like. Jerry Judy hasn't stepped up to the plate yet. Um, that's going to be a tricky game, but that may be the loss there because Denver does get up for primetime games. Then you got the big one against the L.A. Rams. And we were talking about the interior line earlier. <laughs> well, guess who's in the middle of that defense? Number 99, Aaron Donald. He could wreck the entire game plan. And the Rams feel like, hey, you won six in a row against us, but we got the big one. And we're hoisting on Lombardi, and you're not. And so that game, that's the ultimate swing game. You go either 3-1 and one there, and then you play Carolina and Atlanta on the road. And mm-hmm. as you said, Damon, all the chips are on the table. You can start thinking about, hey, man, let's take a lead in division and start, you know, putting ourselves in position for home field advantage. Or you could be 2-2 two and two with two road games on deck, and you never know what may happen. So, And then, I, by the way... Not not that we're going to go beyond right. the first four games, but then after that Falcons game, oh, it's, it's Chiefs and then the Rams again. Yeah, then no the doubt. bye, then the Chargers. Then the yeah. Chargers. It's, so, <laughs> so three and one. Got to stack up some wins. You know, to look at this four game stretch, no matter yeah. who you, you, you can lose to Chicago, just be three and one after the first quarter of the season. I think that's the goal for this football team. I think it is too. And, you know, the. What you're talking about in terms of Trey Lance taking the NFL by storm, he's a mystery. Yeah. The mystery won't be as hard to solve by the fifth week because no. these other coaches are paid too yep. mm-hmm. and they will have some finally some footage on him and who Lance is will you know be a little bit more in focus but catching the league off guard a little bit early with the razzle dazzle that you know you didn't expect out of the Niners with Jimmy Garoppolo is why Trey Lance is here you know to win when you got a rookie yep. on a rookie scale contract means that you've got a really good team around him and that's kind of where i want to go in the remainder of this segment because we get so fixated on offense offense yep. sells tickets offense is what people yep. you know uh mm-hmm. talk about monday through friday uh defense boys and this defense should be very very special all year long. And I got to just tell you that to me, Nick Bosa hmm. is the best watch in the NFL. I can't take my eyes off of him when he is on the field. He yeah. is moving people. Is that because he makes you jealous? Roller of skates. It's all, well, yeah. Eight pack and no body fat and everything. I get jealous because of that. But like a G.I. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Outrageous. Put a shirt on. You're making us look bad. <laughs> making us all look bad. But no, he really is. He is built like the Incredible Hulk. He is as in shape as any defensive lineman has ever been in shape day one of training camp like everything about him just screams i'm about to have the year that you thought that i could have yeah I'm, and I'm, when i say that i mean defensive player of the year right mvp level conversation i think that he could be flirting with 20 sacks wow if the rest of this defensive line and chris kasurik's group gets its job mm-hmm. done he could just feast and uh, he's going to be moved all over the place i mean right. where he is coming from is going to be a huge question mark and then drake J- drake jackson mm-hmm. on the other side is i mean i already like him more than d ford i don't know about you i haven't seen him play yet but i like right. him more <laughs> well, we and, know he's gonna play yeah <laughs> exactly yeah um it, it, i just think that this defense is going to be as interesting 
if not more successful than this offense will be at any point in time of the year. Two things on that. One, I think you're absolutely right about Bosa pushing the 20 sack mark. He could get three or four just in week one. That Bears offensive line is not very good, and it wouldn't be a surprise to me if Bosa comes out of that game with multiple sacks. But I think this year's defense, and again, we have to see it, but just projecting, looking at the players they have, I wouldn't be shocked. In fact, I think that it is more likely than not that this group is better than they were in 2019. I know we're removing Eric Armstead from the equation, or not Eric Armstead, but DeForest DeForest Buckner from the equation, but you have a better version of Nick Bosa. You have Eric Armstead exclusively playing inside where he is at his best. You have Fred Warner at the peak of his powers. You have a better version of Dre Greenlaw. I think your secondary is going to be better because remember that year, they kept trying Mm -hmm. to get Akella Witherspoon in there, and he eventually got benched in the playoffs because he wasn't good enough. Got burnt by Diggs. Emmanuel (laughs) Mosley, Charvarius Ward. I just, there's not a weak spot on this defense and it wouldn't shock me if by week 10 or 11 or 12 we're looking at this group and going man this is a Super Bowl caliber defense this is the best defense that Kyle Shanahan has had well remember 2019 they were top heavy with that front four yes right they were top mm-hmm. heavy with Buckner Armstead and D Ford and Nick Bosa now you have depth because yeah. you have Kevin Givens who's making waves waves here. Hassan Ridgeway is making waves. We haven't even brought about brought up Javon Kinlaw, former first round pick, who showed us some glimpses like James Wiseman with the Go to State Warriors, even though we still don't know. I like the fact that he stayed in the Bay Area during the offseason, said, I'm gonna get my body right. I'm gonna be red. He's even checked writers for if, cried out loud. If that <laughs> knee, if that knee doesn't betray him, he should have at the very worst, a functional season. No doubt. At yeah, the no very doubt. worst, Absolutely he true. should be plugging a gap on every single no play and yeah. making it hard to run up the middle. And that's a bad season for him. Yep. If he gets after the quarterback at all, now you really got the unlocking of the most dangerous position right. group in all of football. No doubt. And hopefully he stays healthy. Hopefully he can get it done. I'll say this about Ken Law. And it's like I said about Wiseman. It's funny that you, you you brought them up, too, because when you look big on an NBA court, you're freaking huge. Huge. Yep. When you look big with your hand in the dirt in a three technique on a defensive line, you're huge. Kinlaw is a monster. So let me tell you, I met him at Chase Center during the playoffs. He was coming to games with Brandon Ayuk. Did he knock your hat off? And, well, no, he did not. He actually followed me on IG after the conversation. There you go. <laughs> My relationship is a lot better than, his, <laughs> than other people's in this market. But hey, I'm not going to talk about that. He just that. wanted Warriors right. tickets. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. He's like, hey, yeah, yeah. the guy I'm to like, talk to. I'm that. like, he's a goes, yes, sir. What's up, man? And he shook my hand, Damon and Kyle, and then almost broke my hand. Your hand disappeared, like, right? Like, it was just like Kawhi Leonard, Javon Kinlaw, who has freakier hands, right? I was just like, geez, this guy is rocked up. And he's like, man, I'm going to ball out. I'm out here. I'm doing this and that. So the D-line's deeper, and we haven't even brought we haven't even brought up D'Amico Ryans, who made everybody last season forget about Robert Sala. Yeah. Hell, some people thought he did a better job than Robert Sala. So now he's in his second year calling this defense with a lot of familiar faces. I think you're right, Kyle. This defense can be a lot better than 2019 because they're just so much deeper. D'Amico Ryan's got production out of a defense that had Josh Norman yeah. playing meaningful snaps oh, in boy. 2022. I forgot about Drake. That's Patrick. wild. <laughs> Damon oh, Bruce, Bonte Hill, Kyle Madsen here with you. It's the Red and Gold Roundtable, a Labor Day spectacular. <laughs> Ooh, See me roll good. the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. Right um, I want to talk about this secondary with Talanoa Hufanga, who I think Ooh. is about to have a step forward year. I mean, breakout year, I'm not going to want you to say everybody's about to have a breakout right, yeah. year on this yeah. team, but I really think that he is going to be a lot better than what people saw out of this you know, safety position last year. I like him an awful lot. Emmanuel Mosley, obviously, is still a work in progress. Diamador Lenore is, you know, go Ducks, Grandy, is a guy who <laughs> we'll see more of and have more yep. responsibility this year. And don't call me Chavarius. I prefer Mooney Ward. Mooney Ward. Mooney Ward. What's is, the story around that again? <laughs> What's the, you, it, unique family names, okay, to say yes. the least. Gotcha. Yes, that gotcha. was it. And yeah. they wanted easier names to pronounce than their government names, so their mom gave them all nicknames. And I was gotcha. playing some sound, and someone said, you are making fun of black culture and black names. I oh. said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I've never heard of a Bravunda, and neither have you. <laughs> yeah. Their sister's name is Bravunda. <laughs> yeah, I've never Doesn't heard of that. Doesn't go by that. that I've is, never heard of that. Yeah. I grew up in the hood. I've never heard yeah, of that. you. Tanisha's. To Tanisha's, you know, Maisha's. I've never heard of that. I love name. a great name. Yeah. I celebrate great and unique names. Sky Bolt is one of my favorite days of all time, for goodness sakes, okay? I love a good name. Mooney Ward has played nothing 
but high leverage snaps against teams that are playing catch up against the Kansas City Chiefs. So he is being targeted and thrown at Mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, all down in distances of his career up to this point. If this guy literally can lock down one corner spot and then you have everyone else just filling out the secondary Again, sky's the limit for this defense. I'm a little bit worried about Jimmy Ward being out the first four weeks, like as we talk about how important those are. Yeah, that's a And good I, I agree with you, Damon. I think Talano Hufanga is going to be a really good player for them. It, I, I Three, four turnovers, whether he's forcing fumbles or grabbing interceptions, he's just always around the ball. Super instinctual playmaker. But when you take Jimmy Ward out and you're putting Dante Johnson, Tavarius Moore, like uh, George, George Odom, Odom if Dante you're putting, Johnson, nine lives with the Niners. It's incredible. It's incredible. So if you're putting one of those guys back, are they serviceable? Yeah, probably. But Jimmy Ward is a is a stopper. He is a playmaker. He is the reason that the Niners don't give up long touchdowns. They don't give up a ton of big plays. So if that element is there for opposing offenses, especially going to Denver with Russell Wilson and then facing Matthew Stafford and the Rams, that could hurt them early. But once Jimmy Ward is back and if this defense is healthy... It's going to be excellent. I want to highlight Hufanga because he possibly made the greatest special teams play in 49ers history in that Green Bay game in the divisional round. I don't think it's I mean, possible. It, and, and when we talk about strong safety, I think we we get so carried away with the quarterback position and the wide receiver position when it comes to the 49ers and defensive ends. Strong safety has been a very underrated position position in this franchise's history going back to Ronnie Lott you think about Tim McDonald hell Tony Paris was solid for a couple years you had Dante Whitner the hitman you've had some really good Lance Shelters you had some really good Merton Hanks safeties. baby Merton Hanks interchangeable the safeties. neck you Incredible. know the neck the chicken dance Hufanga has all the goods we know Hufanga will knock your head off mm-hmm. he's about that life and that's what I need for my strong safety I need a guy who if you're going to run a slant you know he's going to hit you. Number 29, 29 is going to be lurking with that long hair. So I like to call out Hufanga. Although, without Jimmy Ward, he's going to be tested early in pass coverage. It's the only position where I don't mind personal fouls. Yeah, I, I love a strong Seriously, safety. Seriously, like every, every once in a while. Like you don't want it to hurt the team. But if you're going to take one every once in a while, I, I totally agree. And I think, so there were some questions about his athleticism in the NFL and how it was going to yeah. play. But I think he's smart enough. And he has enough like functional athleticism that that's not going to hurt him too bad. He's fast. I mean, I I, yep. I, I, right. I have not watched him in questioned athleticism <laughs> yep. for a minute. Right. I mean, he looks the part to me. So you, pass, you question pass coverage. Where's he going to be at? Is he going to be in the right spot? God, who is who without Jimmy sorry. Ward? Who was who the line? Who was the safety from USC who had just Taylor Mays? Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays. That's Mays. It. Taylor Mays. Mm-hmm. Another guy who I thought like, oh man, the pump this, block or the touchdown oh, against Atlanta. Yes. Oh, oh, he made it. Taylor Mays is starting the corner. Yeah, it didn't uh, happen. He didn't. Another yeah. one of those. Look, I got caught looking at his abs. Yeah. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Yeah. Spider graph <laughs> from the <laughs> combines. Crazy. It is wild. It is wild. This is going to be a very interesting football season, to say the least. When you look at the rest of the NFC West, how do you sum it up? I mean, obviously, Seattle's taking a step back. We sort of know who the Rams are. Being the Los Angeles Rams again is not going to be as easy as everyone just assumes Mm -hmm. it is. As a matter of fact, them taking a step back from winning a Super Bowl is what normally happens. Not a lot of repeat Super Bowl champions throughout the history of the NFL. The real wild card is this Arizona team. What do you make of this Arizona team? You stole my thunder there with Arizona because there's been a lot of questions, right, about Kyler Murray and the way they faded last season. They faded. They got out to a hot start. And the year before that. And the year before that, they faded. And I'm I'm not sold on Kingsbury. They're Head coach, but all I all just Texas Kyler. Tech teams faded. Oh, dude, they I think faded Cliff hard. Stinks. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not high on him at all. However, they have weapons: Hollywood Brown alongside DeAndre Hopkins, and they still have Kyler Murray, and they have some studs on defense. JJ Watt's probably never going to stay healthy for 17, but he's still there. Mm-hmm. And he got hurt. And they started fading. Isaiah Simmons, their linebacker safety out of Clemson, Kyle. You know, I what love does this he turn guy. Into? What I does he turn guy. into, dude? I mean, he could be an absolute monster yeah. if they play him right. I think they played him out of position because Vance Joseph, I think, stinks as a D coordinator. But they are the wild card. And we saw it twice last year. They walked into Levi Stadium with Colt McCoy, and they punked the 49ers. Oh, so they, I know they have that in them. And they got one of the best safeties in football, Buda Baker. That Buda guy Baker's can a ball. absolutely Very good play. play. So absolutely they, play. They, could be, they can be a 12-win team, an 11-win team, or they could be an 8-win team. Yep. So that's a team you can't sleep on. And they, I think they could battle for this division title with the 49ers because I do believe the Rams will take a step back. I think the, the weird friction between Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury is going to be their downfall at some point. 
Like, I don't know exactly what's going on internally, but the fact that Cliff's like, here, you call plays. It's a little Like, strange. I think there's a frustration there. It's a very passive-aggressive relationship right. Yeah, for right. quarterback and, it, and coach to I, just, I don't know how that, how that can exist when you're an offensive head coach and they're not going to have DeAndre Hopkins for the first yep. six games. How good really is Hollywood Brown? I'm not 100% right. sure. Can James Conner, what he scored, 16, 18 yeah, touchdowns on, last, year? last year? last year. I, I don't know if he can repeat that. I just, I'm very, very wary. They don't have Chandler Jones anymore. Nope. I, I, when, I, when, I, when does Hopkins come back? Week like, seven, yeah, uh, he has to miss six games. Yes, so, which is strange. I but, talked to I talked to my friend who covers the Cardinals, and he's like, "They got to get Tack McKinley in here. Their their edge depth is bad." And I'm like, "Tack McKinley? Oh well, that's, that's where you're at." <laughs> so that's why I'm I'm down on the Cardinals right now. But I think you're right, Bonte. If you told me, yeah, they went 11 and six, it's like, oh wow, they figured it out. You wouldn't be but shocked. They have a lot of things to figure out if they're going to get to 11 wins. You talk about hard knocks. Whether or not we would want to see this 49ers team on hard knocks, I think everybody would. With the dynamic of Jimmy and Trey. <laughs> Arizona's going to be the in-season hard knock team this year. Last year was the Colts. Oh. This year it's Arizona. Starting at like, I think, what, week 9 or something? Week 10? I don't know what it is. But that's going to be fascinating with all the film leakage of Kyler Murray not doing his homework. Did you I'll watch fade that. in Kyler Murray's in his house somewhere in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> a playbook is out of focus, but clearly on the coffee table oh, as he's man. playing Call of Duty. There's Welcome a, to your in-season hard knocks. <laughs> Monster energy drinks spilled all over the playbook. You're right, though. They're a wild card. But this division, how fun is the NFC West? For so long, it was a laughing stock of the league. Yeah. Now it's like we're going to beat each other up, and we're going to have three teams represent the NFC in the postseason. Dude, I think the West is the best when you look at the AFC, too. Yep. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, there is down. so much talent out here. When you look at the NFC, the to me, the shallowness of the NFC is one of the best thing that the 49ers have going for them. I mean, when you're point. talking about who are the teams you need to be worried about, Green Bay's on the list, Tampa Bay's on the list, the 49ers are on that list, the Rams are on that list, and then the list gets a little murky after that. Just, to, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you you can make educated guesses who you think is going to be, you know, a, a front runner. I, you know who I think is a dark horse for sneaky, very good football team? Philly? Philadelphia Eagles. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to say I, th- I think the Eagles, no. I, lo- I think the Eagles are going to be better than the Cowboys. I could see that. I would buy that. I, I think they're talent. I think they're a more talented roster. The thing there, though, is Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts is going to be somebody I'm watching this year because I think it's something the Niners can model uh, Trey after a little bit. Like, Eagles might be the fastest team in football. Well, yeah. look at what they did They're around loaded. them. Devontae Smith. Yep. And then, oh, by the way, we're going to trade for A.J. Brown. Yep. You still have a great tight end in Dallas Goddard. You got a slew of running backs. And they have a defense. And they got an offensive line that is yep. fast, mobile, yep. quick, healthy. They stay yep. together. They've been playing together for a few mm-hmm. years. So I think the Eagles are going to be one of those, you know, will they crash the party as a division winner or a wild card team, and then what does Dallas do? And then after that, you know, I mean, who Saints, do you, maybe, Davis, maybe they, they lost Sean Payton. Though. I yeah, don't I'm not I, buying I, the Saints. I I don't believe in Dennis Allen until yeah. he proves otherwise. Right. I am a Jameis fan, though. I think Jameis is pretty I damn good. I think, I think he's, he's a little underrated. Yeah, right. he's pretty yeah. good. Yep. I mean, if it weren't for those, what, 30 interceptions, things could have gone differently <laughs> for him. He went 30 you know, 30, it, hey, it was the LASIK, David. He did LASIK. Yeah. He's good now. I, I don't think I could do the LASIK. I've been offered LASIK. I, I can't even watch Jillian put her contacts in. Like, I get a little <laughs> eye phobia. But look, um, enough about my wife's eyeballs. We are going to put our eyeballs on the rest of the NFL and on yep. the rest of this season. We have one segment left here on the Red and Gold Roundtable on 95.7 The Game. A Labor Day spectacular, a labor of love. Damon Bruce, Bonte Hill, Kyle, thank you very much. What, what, plug the website, man, because I don't know if people understand the great work that you guys do. Nineswire.com is where you can find just all the any game stuff, roster stuff. Try and cover it all. I Kyle steal Manson. stuff from there all the time and don't cite them. My I, man. No, yeah. it's, it, there is no no Wait, footnoting or citing sources <laughs> from me either. Just straight plagiarism here on 95.7 The Game. Brought to you by BMW Fairfield, now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, 
every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately, like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? Mm, it sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's true when your business is growing fast and even more true when there's a lot of uncertainty. Inflation is running rampant, supply chains are clogged, and the labor market is tight. What does that mean for margins? But not every business is in the dark. Over 31,000 businesses know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of financials, planning, budgeting, and of course, inventory. So you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place. In 2022, profit is the new growth. So NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your manual business processes, and see where to save money. Know your numbers, know your business, and get to know how NetSuite can be the source of truth for your entire company. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to NetSuite.com slash radar. NetSuite.com slash radar. If you're a professional builder or designer, here's some good news from Golden State Lumber. Their relationships with Capital Lumber, Cal Cascade, Humboldt Sawmill, and others have led to an increase in lumber inventory. Golden State strives to deliver most materials the next day, if not the same day. Be sure to download the Golden State app, which provides access to hundreds of resources. Find it at goldenstatelumber.com. For three generations, Golden State. When you succeed, we succeed. Great cars and great customer experience are what define a great dealership. At BMW of Fairfield, we deliver on both counts. BMW of Fairfield is the top-rated BMW dealership in the Bay Area, according to Google Reviews. We love selling the ultimate driving machines, but our success rests on the outstanding experience we provide our customers. It's a better way to buy and own a vehicle. Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. Okay, you know those amazing spots only the true San Francisco locals are in on? Like square pizzas. That place with the square pizzas? Or Mama Hoo Hoo? The spot for sweet and sour chicken that's anything but so-so. Oh, or, or up! You know, with the Granch dressing. And all the other spots the real SF locals know without us even saying them. Yeah, they're on DoorDash. San Francisco gets it. DoorDash has it. Are you looking for a rewarding new career? Join the United States Postal Service and apply for roles nationwide. Serve your community with pride and receive benefits including competitive pay and opportunities for advancement. Whether you are looking for full-time, part-time, or seasonal positions, we have options that may be perfect for you. The United States Postal Service is an equal opportunity employer. Apply now at usps.com slash careers. Kirby is your driveway mechanic. They bring the shop to you with brake and tire replacements, oil changes, and much more. It's the ultimate convenience. Easy booking, transparent pricing, on-time arrivals, and service right in your driveway. No waiting rooms and direct access to your mechanic with friendly and reliable service. No middleman or upsells. They're so sure you'll love the convenience. Take $50 off your first oil change with code OIL50 at Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E.com and use code OIL50. Kirby, your driveway mechanic. Now back to the Red and Gold Roundtable on 95.7 The Game. 
Back here to Red and Gold Roundtable. Damon Bruce, Bonte Hill, Kyle Madsen with you, getting you ready for a football season, which is starting soon. Happy Labor Day to you and yours. Let's kind of wrap things up here, gentlemen, by going back to where it all started. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't know if you heard, is still with the San Francisco 49ers. What? I know. It's, it's a, it was a shocking news to a lot of people when it came out. Uh, Albert Breer said that there were basically three elements to this entire negotiation. Number one, the team was communicating with both quarterbacks for weeks before this actually came down mm-hmm. in any sort of breaking news, which is obvious. You want everybody on the same page there. Number two, there is a clear part of a commitment that this is Trey Lance's team. Like, Jimmy, just because you're still here doesn't change the fact that this is Trey Lance's team. And I really do think that there is, they, they are, they're obviously connected, but they're not connected. And finally, this doesn't happen unless Garoppolo takes less base money than Trey Lance. So you don't have that weird, I make more yeah. than you, right. I'm more proven than you right. dynamic in the locker room. We're brought to you by BMW Fairfield. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. But I think Albert Breer, he got all three of those correct. And I think that that's how the 49ers were able to pull this rabbit out of their hat. Open communication, everybody being on the same page, egos being put in check, paychecks being put in check, a lot of agreement and accord yeah needed to be reached for any of this to happen and we criticize rightfully so dysfunctional franchises all the time i think we kind of need to applaud the functionality that made this a possibility yeah no doubt about that and kyle i want to ask you how long do you think this took to put together the jimmy garoppolo restructure contract to where he was going to make 24.2 million dollars and he gets it slashed to 6.5 but look you got a hundred million dollars in the bank you're playing in the million dollar league i'm not going to complain too much about a pay cut he's got that subway so, money he's yeah, got subway money he's going to ex- expand yeah. his yeah, he's, he's, he's gonna earning be, this year he's going to be fine here but there that is true that 49ers or ran right like an NFL franchise under John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. There's no doubt Jed York has come a long way letting those guys do the football work and he stayed out of the spotlight. But I do wonder how long they really pondered bringing Jimmy Garoppolo back into the fold as the backup quarterback. So Lynch said it was a month. I heard it was like 48 hours that it really like all came together and they were like, okay, fine, this is what we're doing. You had that Which initial is- lunch to talk about it and everyone kind of puts it in suspended animation yeah. maybe 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 and then yeah 72 hours out they're like you guys want a party yeah like, hey, are, we, are we doing this and and so that and and it makes sense the the thing that i i keep going back and forth on and i, I think damon you're right i think at this point the 49ers have earned the benefit of the doubt to say okay i'm trusting that kyle shanahan went to jimmy garoppolo and said we'll do this you're the backup this is not a competition. You are QB2. You are there in the event that our starter gets hurt or mop-up duty. And Jimmy Garoppolo went great. And then Shanahan has to go to Trey and says, you are the starter. Don't look over your shoulder. Look forward. Like, we're developing you. You're our starter now and for the next 10 years, hopefully. And that's on Kyle Shanahan. So I'm putting my faith in him that that's what he did. Because I think if I tried to put, I tried to, like, if the Cowboys, if this was the Dallas Cowboys doing this, I think I would be like, what a clown show. What yeah. are the, you got to get rid of that guy and move forward with your guy. Right. But the this 49ers team has navigated things so adeptly that it's like, all right, you you go ahead and try. It's a tough needle to thread. Yeah. Very tough. I think they got a better chance of doing what a lot of people have declared, well, that can't work. Right. Maybe more than any other team. Yeah, and it, it worked last year, right? With Trey Lance being drafted number three overall. How many people, including yours truly, pound the table, play Trey, play Trey, and yet they make the NFC Championship game. However, my initial reaction going back to the shock was, man, the Niners kind of botched this situation. They kept talking about trading this guy and go seek a trade, and yet he's back. And basically, after years of flirting with other people like Tom Brady, like Kirk Cousins, like everybody else in the league, while you dated Jimmy Garoppolo, you're always looking for that upgrade. And so I was thinking to myself, like, man, they, what a weird situation. I, I That's a great analogy about the Cowboys thing, because I do think it just kind of looked like a clown show. Now, it's going to work out in the end, and it's a good move for the 49ers, but I'm still going to lean on... Man, this kind of was a circus all offseason with the whole Jimmy Garoppolo sweepstakes of him working out on the side field by himself. Oh, let me go home while the team goes and practice. How weird was that? That was the strangest thing I've ever seen on the NFL field. 
But it worked. But it worked. But it's it a good worked. Move. Everyone stayed happy. No one was stepping on each other's toes. It allowed Lance to take every single rep in practice with no doubt about being usurped by the guy who's still here. Like I I think it's odd. But I think it weirdly worked itself yeah. out in a way where now Jimmy, again, he can get up to speed on this offense that in 48 is, hours. Yeah, there's no doubt not, about that's it. That's not a problem. And you know what? For a, you know, a group of guys who spent an entire last football season talking about, like, well, what do you think the Trey Lance package is going to look like this week if we're going to see it at all? <laughs> at least we don't have to talk about, what do, what do you think the Garoppolo package hey, is going to look like? we six plays for Jim. Yeah. And Will there be, be a fun? package? Tur- oh turn God. about fair play. He gets oh. to come on in first, first and goal and throw the first there touchdown of the year. There you right. go. Make it, <laughs> make it even. That, though. Make it even. Lance throws a touchdown pass at Chid Sherfield. We're like, we want more. And then the Green Bay game, they're down 17 yeah. nothing. Last play of the first half. Oh, let's throw in Trey Lance. He runs a quarterback keeper for a touchdown. And yeah. we're all saying, maybe you need to play Trey. Maybe you need to play Trey. I do wonder if there's going to be some packages for Jimmy G. I'm not going to lie. No chance. Do we, do we <laughs> no pour chance. a little out for Trent Sherfield? Remember how much we talked about oh, him man. last year? Textbook Trent. Good. My what are you talking about more? Now. Trent Sherfield, Quentin Patton, or Trent Taylor? Trent Taylor. We did talk about Trent Taylor. A lot we of Trent Taylor Quint content. Patton. Quint yeah. Patton a lot too, but yeah. Trent Taylor. I, I, the, the one thing though, and I, I, I agree that in theory this is all great, but what happens if they do start 0-2? What happens in the locker room? And Shanahan can tell everybody if George Kittle knocks on the door and says, Coach, Jimmy's got to be the guy week three. We need to win this game. And Shanahan could tell him to kick rocks, <laughs> but now you start fracturing that that foundation that Shanahan's built over these five years. I, that That is my one concern with this. And you're right to have that concern. I haven't seen this locker room turn toxic not once. Mm -hmm. In all the Shanahan years. In all of them. In the good years and in the bad years. I haven't heard of the circular firing squad. I haven't heard of the pointing. I haven't heard of the... Well, this side of the locker room feels one way, and this side of the mm-hmm. locker room does not. This has not been a divided locker room mm-hmm. since the days of Colin Kaepernick and Alden Smith. It really right. hasn't been. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that that is another stepping stone that led the franchise to this totally unique decision, which we keep on framing is so unique when you know the history and know the names and the reputations all involved. But if you just take everybody's name and reputation out of it and just say, did you break camp with your 53 best players? And do you have a veteran quarterback yep. who's experienced working knowledge of the league and the team as your QB two, this is all normal. This yep. is what you want. This is mm-hmm. ideal. You got the okay. young guy who's got all the talent in the future in front of him, and the guy who just in case has still got one or two more good innings to come in out of the bullpen with. Imagine that scenario, Kyle. And Brock Purdy's your number two. No thanks. Nate Sheffield's your number two. I'm out. You know, like so. Yeah, you're right, Damon. This is you have a veteran. If things goes awry with Trey Lance. Well, we could go to a guy who's helped us get to a Super Bowl and an NFC Championship game. I don't care how it got done, yeah. but this locker room won a lot of big games with Jimmy. But that one and three start, one and four, because I try not to think about it like that. I'm like, Niners are going to be good. But in case they do start one and three, I do think, I do think some players are going to be like, hey, Kyle, dude, we we won with number yeah. ten. Yeah. Let's make it happen. The other, the other thing, and and while signing Garoppolo, it's like, oh, this is a hedge because they don't think Lance is ready. Lance also slid for the first time in his life against Green Bay. Yep. In that in that preseason game, that was the first time he had slid in his life. The scenario where he turns the corner and a linebacker wrecks him and he's concussed and now he's out for that game and out for the next week, the Niners have a chance now to win that game right. and win the next week. That was not the case. That's never been the case. Real quick, though, guys are getting older on his team. Use check. Kittle's been hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. Trent Williams is 34. Debo's reckless when it runs the football. And I love it. I love that about Debo. I think we all do. But this window to win now in the league, if Trey does get out to that slow start, you can't waste seasons anymore. Nope. Guys are not going to be in their primes forever. Debo may not have a year like he did a season ago. Trent's getting older, like I just mentioned. Fred's getting older. Bosa's had multiple leg injuries dating back to high school. I do wonder how short that leash will be for Trey Lance if they do get out to a rocky start. With the players on this team, knowing their ages, knowing them circumstances, the injury history, that's something that's going to be a real thing in this locker room. No matter how 
good the sweater is, you just pull on the thread that is labeled injury and everything can start <laughs> yeah. going wrong yeah. yep. and the whole sweater comes apart easily. Uh, Ray Ratto, we're talking about sweaters. <laughs> thinking talk of about you. Him. Thinking of you. No, exactly. Do not talk <laughs> about him. Uh, Damon Bruce, Kyle Madsen, Bonte Hill. It is the Red and Gold Roundtable. We've got about 12 minutes left to kind of put a fine point on everything and... Let me just ask a few questions. Lightning round, if you will. Who leads the team in catches this year? Brandon Ayuk. I'm oh, going Brandon Ayuk. that's good. I I'm, think, gonna go, I'm, go going, ahead, I'm going George Kittle. I like that. Safety valve. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Ayuk because of the rapport. And I keep comparing it to Jordan Poole, how Jordan Poole went from second-year player, averaging 14 points per game after he got called up from the bubble in Orlando and helping the Warriors. Like, nobody else wanted shots against Played his way the out of the doghouse. Played his way out of mm-hmm. the doghouse. Didn't want Draymond didn't want to take shots. A lot of these guys didn't want to take shots. Jordan Poole's like, I'll take it. I may miss, but I'm not afraid of the moment. And then boom, third year he explodes. Now he's gonna get a big, big bag from either the Warriors or somebody else. Mm-hmm. Brendan Ayuk being in the doghouse, people forget from Halloween on, he had over seven hundred receiving yards. Mm-hmm. And he started to turn it up a little bit. We saw the athleticism. He's freaky. He's long. He could go deep. He can go over the middle. And I thought he had a good playoff run. Jimmy just missed him on a couple throws. I think Ayuk is going to be the best wide receiver for the 49ers. And I can see George Kittle maybe being around in that neighborhood with Brendan Ayuk, but I'll go B.A. Does he lead the team in receiving yards as well? That's where I'm going, Ayuk. Because I think those broken plays, scramble, look down the field. The, the play against Houston where where Lance goes right and he stuffed it in the, in the ground, that throw was there, though. Ayuk broke off his route and got open. And that's where I think the rapport Bonte is talking about is really going to come in. Maybe the catch numbers aren't as high as I think Kittles will be, but I think it's going to be chunk plays. It's going to be 18, 20, 30, 40 yards of play, especially on those broken plays. Going Debo? So that was my next question. I'm not, I'm not answering any questions. I'm asking questions at this point. <laughs> you said no offense? No, no. Yeah. Ask now. Who, is Debo going to lead the team in receiving yards or receptions? I think IU is the clubhouse leader for both in my mind. Maybe George Kittle, because young young quarterbacks can find a best friend in a tight end. Yeah. Now, the question is, will he be out in enough patterns and not being asked to block? <laughs> Man, so that's, that's, you know, yeah. How will George Kittle be used by Kyle Shanahan? Is he going to be the world's best blocking tight end who can also catch, or is he going to be the world's best other than Travis Kelsey, playmaking tight end, who can also block like a tackle, for goodness sake. So how he is deployed goes a long way into how many targets he gets. Are you worried at all about the lack of kumbaya between Lance and Debo that we've heard, that they're not on the same page, that... You know, Samuel already in limited snaps has got, oh, the back of my knee. I, 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 I. They spent an awful lot of money on a guy who they were, it felt at times, hesitant to spend an awful lot of money on. And it's not because of the way he played. It's not because of how much they did or didn't like him. I think it was because of durability concerns. And I got those about Debo. When he's healthy and ready to go, we understand that he's one of the best playmakers in the league Will he be healthy and ready to go? I think so. I Because I think he knows he signed this three-year deal because he wants another deal. So I think he's going to make sure he's in good shape. He's going to make sure he's ready for the start of the season. Yeah, he's got that little bruise behind his knee. Doesn't sound like it's going to be a huge deal. The only worry I have with the rapport between him and Trey Lance comes on, like I said, those broken plays. Those plays where Debo's got to get you know maybe up the field and he's coming back to the ball. That's where... That's where I think their lack of work together will come in, but they're going to have practices. They're going to have games. They're going to have time to talk it out. I think they eventually work it out. I don't think their season's going to be defined by it. How many carries for Debo Samuel? Well, I think he gets over 30 carries easily. I still think they're going to use him as a running back at times, especially with the room being thinner now uh, without Trey Sermon. However, uh, the concern about Debo Samuel that's my guy. Like, I wanted the Niners to drive to him. You know, I was like, get Debo, bring him in. The way he acted in the offseason said a lot about him to me. Like, I didn't see that side before. Where all of a sudden, it comes time to play with the money, and you saw Warner and Kittle. They say, look, we're going to wait. We're going to go to training camp. We'll get this done. 
you're fun following on social media, you're doing a little kid games, right? I don't, I don't like that. So stuff. I, you know, I I don't like it either. But I do think the whole like unfollowing on social media is now just the opening gambit of negotiations yeah, they, in yeah, modern yeah, ages. Control like, the public, right? Here. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. take all my pictures down in a 49ers uniform, and I'm going to screw right. you guys. And I'm going to say, yeah, I don't care about that. Whatever. His only leverage was like public outrage, right? Yeah, That's it. Which is, yeah, which this regime hasn't had. That was the first time they had that, right? Mm -hmm. So you think about the injuries. And even last year, going into that NFC Championship game, he was banged up. He gets banged up because he runs mm -hmm. hard. He runs through people. The bone bruise, you're missing out on another week of practice, another chance to build a rapport with Trey Lance. That is a concern of mine. I can see the drop-off from Debo Samuel from last season. And you look at his history of South Carolina. Five games, ten games, seven games, three games, ten games. Niners, obviously, in 2020 was a lost year. I'm not alarmed by Debo Samuel, but I am. I do have my eyes on him because yeah. what happens if he doesn't get those touches this year after what we just saw in the offseason with him off the field? Yeah. Is he going to bitch him on about it? Is he going to complain about it? Is he going to throw a little hissy fit? Hey, I don't, don't want to hear anyone complain about how little they're being used right. when the offseason complaint was how much are you going to use Exactly. Man. I think he's going to see the same amount. What do you have? 59 carries last year. I think he's 59 yeah. for 365. I think you nailed numbers, it, by the yeah, way. 59, yeah. 365. Yeah, That's why Kyle Bass is hosting yeah. the postgame yeah. show. There you go. So <laughs> Nine a wire. Think, Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gets that that same, right about 60 carries, but I think they're spread out more over the 17 weeks because yep. so I think it was like 55 of those were over the last like eight games yeah, yeah. where they just hammered that run game late. I think you're looking at 60 carries, but spread out over 17 games. And I think they're going to be more typical wide receiver carries. I agree. Um, you know, maybe a little razzle dazzle out of a wishbone or something right. goofy like that. But you, he's not running a gap out of the power no, eye. No, unless they need it. Like if they if they have a third and two and they're like, you know what, Debo's our best short yardage back. We need to win this game to go to the playoffs. They're doing it. Well, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is his team's best short yardage. Yeah. <laughs> really good that's, back. That's, I mean, the king the of the QB Garoppolo sneak, package. right? That's it. The yep. Jimmy G packets. Quarterback sneak ten. Go in. Fourth and one. <laughs> hey, they would do it too. Jogging in. Here Shane. he is. Oh it. my gosh, Jimmy. Would Jimmy do it? Yeah, it's no yeah, choice, of right? Jimmy would do it. Jimmy's no gonna do it. I really think Jimmy's going to be model citizen. <laughs> no I'm looking doubt. at it this way. There's never been a day where he hasn't been anything but model yeah. citizen. Yep. Yep. I mean, the only, only thing in, in the entirety of Garoppolo's career that you could even frame as, you know, the public didn't gobble all that up was with the date with the porn star. I like, know, that's yeah. the only public faux pas. And whether or not it's a faux pas, is, you know, the eyes, you know, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, mm -hmm. I, do I care? Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't care. I think it's kind of awesome, no, actually. Like, my quarterback's getting porn star. Yeah, yeah I, what about I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's, it's the only thing that was ever like a step out of line during the entire man's career. I think he's going to be a model backup quarterback. He is going to be obviously publicly over the top supportive yep. mm -hmm. of not just Lance, but everybody on this team. I think he is going to be seen quite a bit just standing over Shanahan's shoulder, not saying put me in coach, but just, you know, I'm here. Just, it, I'm Being here. Engaged. I'm absorbing. Yep. I am. Yeah, right. I am in the game. I am going to tell this young quarterback when he jogs off the field on a punting down what he might have been able to see. I, I think he is going to be a model citizen, and that professionalism is what led the Niners back to him in the first place. If Trey Lance is good by week ten or eleven. We're going to get that feature about how important Jimmy Garoppolo is, whether it's Mike Silver <laughs> oh, no or doubt. whoever. Yeah. It's going to be here's behind how, the scenes. Right, right. Here's how awesome Jimmy Garoppolo has been for the 49ers. Right. Or you may get the, huh, do you trade Jimmy Garoppolo by November 1st? Do you try to get something from him then? Yeah. yeah that's if there's the a job that opens up, that's going to be something else to watch. It will somebody make the Godfather offer because they've been so rattled by injury at their QB <laughs> position that they're going to come for Garoppolo. I mean, to me, the the Niners have a plan, and the plan is Jimmy is our backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. To deviate from that plan, and then your insurance policy being Brock Purdy? Yeah, that would be a problem. I, I just don't think yeah. that they're going to do that. Now, put a first-round pick on the table, and we're talking. Like, right. you know, give John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan something to really consider they'll consider it but i would be surprised if jimmy were on anyone's roster until the 2023 opening day and would jimmy take that 
would Jimmy wave his no trade clause right. to go to whatever team is making well, this? Now, 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 on the team. The now it's, it's him right. measuring the situation, right? right? It depends on the team. But any team putting here's my thought on that is if it is a first round pick, if some team is going, look, we need a starter. We, it's a team that's competing. It's it's a team that's at the top of their division and had an unexpected quarterback injury. They want to compete for a championship, so they're going to put that first rounder on the table, and it'll be a good situation for Garoppolo. I think that there are two destinations that could apply to this. Miami is oh. something where it happened with Tua, yep. okay, and New England. If, oh, wow! Yeah. If Mac Jones, if Mac Jones oh, do were to experience yeah. an injury, who is the New England Patriots backup? Brian Hoyer. Is it really? I think it's still Brian Hoyer. And then I'm it's Googling Garoppolo it. replacing Hoyer, and it's Finnegan begin again. We're right back to it. I think it's still Brian Hoyer. I'm is not it Brian joking, Hoyer? Which is unbelievable that he's still holding a clipboard. That he's still. You know what thing about Jimmy Garoppolo before we close that I'm really fascinated by is how much hate Jimmy G calls we've taken at the station over the last two years in text. And everybody's like, we can't wait to get number 10 out of town. How much love He's received since restructuring his contract. The Jimmy G fans have come out, of, and I'm not trying to pit and pit people and say, "Hey, you got to be Team Trey or Team Jimmy." But I'm, I am bewildered. I'm like, I'm you shocked at really how much is. love he's gotten, gotten yeah. since he's come back. I'm not shocked at the love, but I was always a little bit shocked at the hate that the man got. Yeah. yeah, because he did the job to the best of his abilities, and at the end of that, even though it didn't win a lot of beauty pageants, you were usually going to bed at night with a W. Yep. And it was surprising how much anxiety that people projected onto him throughout his entire process. So now maybe he does get, you know, a, a little bit more love backing out of the spotlight. Uh, should he be thrown back into it? That first interception to a linebacker? Oh, they'll kill him again. Yep. yep. But football fans only understand what the television camera shows them. And the camera goes from the quarterback to the head coach, mm -hmm. back to the quarterback, tight shots on both. So that's who everyone ends up complaining yeah. about. There are, There is a better chance that this season will become undone based on guard, center, guard yeah. yes. than there is any <laughs> level of quarterback play. And that's kind of where we started, and that's where we finished. Guys, this was an awful lot of fun. Yeah, I no think doubt. it's going to be a hell of a year. It's going to be a super fun year. This was a hell of a round table. I hell of a look round forward table. to a year like it this. It feels like time. we're in week eight already with all the news coming out of Santa Clara with the 49ers. The Bears, Niners, week number one. Cannot wait, boys. This is always good. David, it's good to work with you. And Mattson, I always see you. This was yeah, a this pleasure. Is me, this guys. is a pleasure. Yeah. I now invite you to enjoy your labor, gentlemen. <laughs> a respite from your labor. Thank you for joining us here on the Labor Day Red and Gold Roundtable, brought to you by BMW Fairfield. Now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. Our producer, Mark Grandy, Grandy Maldonado, thank you very, very much. For Kyle Madsen and Bonte Hill, I'm Damon Bruce. Have yourself a good day off.